All right, buckle up. This car has a spoiler. Just got out of Joker with Joaquin Phoenix. Not the movie I wanted to see. Um, it's a movie that I think was a, a good movie for my tastes in terms of just dramas. You know, it was interesting. It's one that I, I think I would have enjoyed, but I, I wanted more of it as a DC Comics property movie, as a, as a Joker movie. Um, maybe it'll grow on me in the same way that the Dark, uh, the Batman Begins did, because that movie did not feel like a Batman movie to me as much as I wanted it to, but this one I think even more so. It just lacked... He never really became the Joker. Not quite. Not quite ever, you know? Uh, at least not an interpretation of the Joker that I've seen before. And while I have lots of room for many different interpretations, it almost felt like, to a greater degree than even Christopher Nolan seemed to uh, come across, it's like the filmmakers were, like, ashamed of the comic bookiness of the character and wanted to strip away as much of that as possible while still being able to call it a movie about a character named Joker, you know? Um, he remained to the very end this sort of um, a pathetic character, you know? Not a frightening character, not a not the grandstanding Joker. I mean, he wasn't like psychotic ever. He, he never really broke completely in the, in the way that like the Heath Ledger Joker was completely broken and off the rails. Like he was nuts. And I wish that they would have started the way that they did with this movie, show this journey, base it in real world mental health uh, reality, mental illness realities, and then take it to the more um, super real place of the Joker in the comics, or, you know, the Joker as Heath Ledger was, you know, where it's kind of above and beyond normal mental illness, you know. Um, I, I, I feel like they didn't take advantage of the property of the Joker like they really could have in this movie. Um, it certainly looks like it's going to be able to stand on its own. There was no post credit scene, and... There was nothing that connected it to the other DC movies as far as the movie continuity. Certainly, you know, what they had the scene at the end where we see Bruce Wayne's parents getting killed as a result of the riot that was started by uh, Arthur Fleck's actions. Um, but that's, you know, just a, a remote connection, really, uh, at best. And they didn't use the same actors as in Batman versus Superman. And so, unless this is kind of another reboot of the DC movie universe, which I don't think it is, I, I, don't, I think they're throwing caution to the wind in terms of continuity and, tr and you know, the, the connection that this may have to continuity for the movies or the TV shows or anything like that, you know. Um, so, but, but I, I, I do think it could fit with the continuity of the movies if you ignore the fact that, you know, they're using different actors to, to portray um, Bruce Wayne as a kid and Thomas and Martha Wayne, you know, if you, if you get over that, and they're also very different ages, too, compared to the ages of Thomas and Martha Wayne in Batman vs. Superman. Um, but if you can get over that, then I could see how the Jared Leto version of the Joker could potentially have been inspired by this prototype version of the Joker, you know? That there could be some loose connection like that, some inspirational connection, you know? Um, so it could be part of those movies, you know, if you overlook a few, you know, details. But, um, yeah, I was disappointed that it took the whole movie until he really became Joker. He only became Joker in the last, like, ten minutes, you know? And what I wanted, and what I thought the the, the trailers were indicating was that we would get about an hour-long origin story leading up to an hour of uh, the, the Joker being who he is in the last, you know, hour. Or at least the last, like, 30 minutes or 45 minutes or something. I, I don't feel like he really became the Joker until the last 10 or 15 minutes of the movie, you know. 
um, which is disappointing to me. Now, you could argue, okay, well, if he's going to become the full-fledged Joker with an hour left in the movie, then what, are we just going to let him run amok and stuff like that with no Batman to stop him? You know, so that, yeah, that is, that is an issue that, you know, would have to be addressed. I was ready for him to still kill himself, you know, and I think that that really sh should have happened. I, I don't really want to see another Joaquin Phoenix Joker movie. I don't really want to see this Joker as part, you know, to kind of get blended in and replace the Jared Leto Joker in the DC Universe movies. Um, I think it's an interesting one and done kind of treatment of the character. Um, and so, and I don't think he fits. Uh, I don't think he would be a, a, a real nemesis for Batman in the DC universe because he's not dangerous, you know? The, the only thing that made him dangerous was that he took uh, the talk show host by surprise at the very end. That's the only thing. But I, I wouldn't believe that Arthur Fleck, as he is at the end of this movie, could lead a gang, could be really a brilliant criminal mastermind. I mean, the Joker is those things too. He is a leader. Um, and, you know, even though he's a psychotic one and has lots of turnaround, I would imagine, because he's killing off his henchmen and all kinds of crazy stuff is going on. Um, but he's, you know, he's brilliant. The Joker is a brilliant, crim has a brilliant criminal mind. And Arthur Fleck does not, you know. Uh, he just kind of surprised people in this movie, and that was it, you know. So I don't think he has the potential to really be the threat that the Joker, as we know him, is to the Batman, as we know him, you know. So he would have to go through a further upgrade, metamorphosis, or something in order to be brought, you know, folded into the, the DC movie universe. I really don't think that's going to happen. And if they do that, I think that would be a mistake. Um, I think this movie works much better without a without without being in a superhero universe. I don't think it wants to be in a superhero universe. I think it really wants to be this quiet character drama, which is what it was from pretty much beginning to end with a few bursts of intensity. You know, um it you know, if you've seen a a quiet Joaquin Phoenix character drama, you know, this is that, but it just has Joker trappings, you know, slapped onto it. Not slapped onto it. That's that's unkind. Um, anyway, I'm getting into the territory I'm probably going to cover in my review, so I don't want to repeat myself. Um, spoiler stuff. Any spoiler? Oh, there was the, the twist where it turns out that the girlfriend that he had was not really his girlfriend. It was just something he was imagining in his head. I'm glad. I'm going to try and really dodge any indication, uh, that any, any potential spoiler to that in the, my review. Um, there was a review that I read a long time ago that mentioned the idea that the, the movie had you questioning reality and what was in the mind of the Arthur Fleck and what was actually happening. And I forgot all about that aspect of the review, and I'm glad that I did because I think it would have had me going into the movie um, suspecting kind of a reality swap, and it would have it would have taken that moment away when there when it was revealed that oh you know uh, he actually didn't have this relationship with her you know. Um, that was cool, you know, so, uh, so it was a, you know, I'm going to say this probably in my review, it was a good drama, I just didn't think it was a good Joker movie, you know, even as open as I am to a wide variety of interpretations about the Joker, uh, and I'll get into that more in my review as to what I really want from uh, a superhero or a comic book movie in terms of its relationship to psychological realism and comic bookiness. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I would want to say. I don't think so. Um, yeah, so not really what I wanted. Um, still a good movie, I would say, but not the kind of good movie that I came to the theater for. Um, I hope that it is not integrated into the DC universe. Or no, let me let me let me say this. I hope that Joaquin Phoenix's Joker is not, like, launched forward into present day, because this was clearly a period piece. Um, and, I don't know, I guess he would have to be an older... They'd have to make put age makeup on him or something? I don't know, it'd be really weird. You know, so my vote is, hey, this was an interesting movie. Worth seeing once, I'm not going to buy it. Um, I'm probably never going to see it again. It was interesting and worth seeing once. Um, 
And uh, that's all I have to say. I'll save the rest for my review. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. We've got a ton going on here at Spirit Blade Productions and Christian Geek Central, including our in-depth Bible study for geeks, movie, game, and other entertainment reviews or commentary, live streams, Christian geek news, original audio dramas, and tons more. And on top of all that, you can become a Spirit Blade insider with an influential voice and get access to exclusive content and rewards. It's your involvement as a patron that will keep all of this going and growing. So I want to thank you for your consideration in that. For more information, please check out our Patreon page through the link below at patreon.com slash spiritbladeproductions. Thanks for listening.